Many Hollywood stars have sat tall in the saddle to make the Western movie genre better over the years. While casual fans will know names like John Wayne and Clint Eastwood, other actors put their unique stamp on one of Hollywood's longest-running movie genres. Some real cowboys remembered their grandfathers recounting the Civil War and who performed as stuntmen in some of Hollywood's earliest silent films. When the Western genre took off during its golden age, it sought to capture their brave frontier spirit. The sort of actors who shaped Westerns changed over the years. After the golden age of Hollywood in the 40s and 50s, and Westerns became slightly more inclusive, there were more opportunities for every performer to make their mark. As audience tastes changed and America became more cynical during and after the Vietnam War, darker stories of nebulous morality became prevalent and the number of Westerns made began to decrease by a wide margin. High quality Westerns are still released in theaters every so often, with new Hollywood stars making their mark on the genre as it diversifies and progresses with every era. Stay tuned as we reveal the top 10 Western actors of all time. Robert Mitchum is universally recognized for his anti-heroes and film noir roles in classics like The Night of the Hunter and Out of the Past, but the actor was also successful in the Western genre. Expelled from Harran High School in New York City's Hell's Kitchen, Mitchum took to the road during the early years of the Depression. The experiences of this period of his life served as his education, shaping his world-weary view and providing fodder for press interviews for the rest of his life. He eventually landed in Long Beach, California, where his sister Julie had settled. And at 1936, she persuaded him to join her in the local theater guild. He launched his film career with a bit role in a Hopalong Cassidy Western, Hoppy Serves a Writ. This led to other small roles and eventually a contract with RKO Radio Pictures, Inc. Despite earning an Academy Award nomination for his supporting performance as a noble captain in the war drama, the story of G.I. Mitchum is not remembered for playing typical Hollywood protagonists in conventional dramas. Instead, his image was constructed around a series of roles in gritty, low-budget crime dramas, later known as film noirs. As a cynical, hard-edged private eye in Out of the Past, a disturbed artist in The Locket, and a shady gambler in His Kind of Woman, he portrayed characters whose bad judgment led to adventures that skirted the line between right and wrong. In 1948, Mitchum's real-life problems seemed to merge with those of his movie characters when he was arrested for possession of marijuana. He served nearly two weeks in jail and was placed on probation for two years, after which the conviction was struck from his record. Such a scandal would have destroyed the careers of most movie stars of the time. But Mitchum's situation evoked sympathy from his fans and enhanced his on-screen image as a rebel and outsider. Although dismissed by some critics in his early years as a sleepy-eyed, well-built hunk who walked through his pictures, Mitchum impressed many with his charismatic screen presence and understated acting style. He was particularly praised for his portrayals of a murderous preacher in The Night of the Hunter, a sympathetic Marine in Heaven Knows. Mr. Allison, an Australian sheep drover in The Sundowners, a vengeful convict in Cape Fear, an aging petty hood in The Friends of Eddie Coyle, and Raymond Chandler's 1940s detective, Philip Marlowe, in Farewell, My Lovely. More importantly, his shadowy star image paved the way for the gritty anti-heroes that became popular in the films of the 1950s and 1960s.
Jimmy Stewart is known for his distinctive drawl and playing good old boy roles, specifically as George Bailey in the classic Christmas film It's a Wonderful Life, but he also appeared in several epic westerns that earn him a spot on the list. Stewart started acting while attending Princeton University, and after graduation, he appeared on Broadway before earning his breakthrough role in Frank Capra's comedy, You Can't Take It With You. Stewart starred in several signature westerns, including How the West Was Won, Winchester 73, and most famously, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, starring Wayne and Lee Marvin. He reunited with Wayne for what turned out to be his co-star's final film, The Shootist and also provided the voice for Wiley Burp in Steven Spielberg's animated Western, An American Tale, Fievel Goes West. Stewart graduated from Princeton University in 1932 with a degree in architecture. He then became part of the University Players, a summer stock company in Falmouth, Massachusetts. There he met Henry Fonda, and the two became lifelong friends. During the years 1932 and 1933, Stewart appeared in several unsuccessful Broadway plays, starting with Carrie Nation, though he was usually singled out for praise by New York critics. These positive reviews led to a motion picture contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in 1934. After a couple of uncredited bit parts, he made his film debut in The Murder Man with Spencer Tracy. In the 1940s, Gregory Peck was one of the most popular stars in Hollywood. While he's initially recognized by most for his role as Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird, he also starred in a series of essential westerns throughout his career. Peck studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York City and appeared in over 50 stage productions including several on Broadway. He started his film career in other genres and popular films, including Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound and The Yearling. Peck took his first against type role as a cruel cowboy in the 1946 Western Duel in the Sun and started the 1950s off with what would become one of his most famous Westerns, The Gunfighter. His performance earned him an offer for the lead role in High Noon, but he turned it down out of fear of being typecast as a Western star. Despite his concerns, Peck continued to appear in Westerns, including The Bravados and How the West Was Won. Peck was also active in politics, challenging the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1947 and was regarded as a political opponent by President Richard Nixon. President Lyndon B. Johnson honored Peck with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1969 for his lifetime humanitarian efforts. Peck died in his sleep from bronchopneumonia at the age of 87. Henry Fonda was a successful Broadway star who made his silver screen debut in the 1935 film The Farmer Takes a Wife with Janet Gaynor. He appeared in the romantic western The Trail of the Lonesome Pine, which was the first Technicolor movie filmed outdoors, and went on to star in other westerns like Jesse James and Drums Along the Mohawk, directed by John Ford. After serving in World War II, Fonda returned to Hollywood, where he reunited with Ford in the western My Darling Clementine as Wyatt Earp. Fonda starred in several more westerns, including The Tin Star, Ford Apache with John Wayne and Shirley Temple, and The Oxbow Incident. Known for his humble, good guy persona, Fonda eventually took on darker roles later in his career most notably as the ruthless villain in the 1962 star-studded movie How the West Was Won, which is considered one of the best Western movies of all time. Fonda won the Academy Award for Best Actor at the 54th Academy Awards for his final film role in On Golden Pond, which co-starred Katherine Hepburn and his daughter Jane Fonda. 
He was too ill to attend the ceremony and died from heart disease five months later. Fonda was the patriarch of a family of actors, including daughter Jane Fonda, son Peter Fonda, granddaughter Bridget Fonda, and grandson Troy Garrity. In 1999, he was named the sixth greatest male screen legends of the classic Hollywood era by the American Film Institute. One of the great movie villains, known for his piercing eyes and chiseled bone structure, Lee Van Cleef was a spaghetti Western star who appeared in over 150 movies and is most famous for his role as the villainous outlaw Angel Eyes from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Van Cleef started as an accountant. He served in the U.S. Navy aboard minesweepers and subchasers during World War II. After the war, he worked as an office administrator, becoming involved in amateur theatrics in his spare time. An audition for a professional role led to a touring company job in Mr. Roberts. His performance was seen by Stanley Kramer, who cast him as henchman Jack Colby in High Noon, a role that brought him great recognition even though he had no dialogue. For the next decade, he played a string of memorably villainous characters, primarily in westerns but also in crime dramas such as The Big Combo. After being in a major car accident, Van Cleef sustained serious injuries and his career started to decline. But in 1965, Italian director Sergio Leone offered him the co-lead role in For a Few Dollars More alongside Clint Eastwood. He continued to work with Leone, appearing in all the Dollar Trilogy films and also starred in other spaghetti westerns, including Death Rides a Horse, The Grand Duel, and Day of Anger. He died of a heart attack on December 1989 and was buried at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. Gary Cooper was a silent Western film star who was known for his strong and quiet on-screen persona that symbolized the ideal American hero. He was one of the top 10 film personalities for 23 consecutive years and one of the top money-making stars for 18 years. The American Film Institute ranked Cooper at number 11 on its list of the 25 greatest male stars of classic Hollywood cinema. Cooper initially started his film career as an extra and stunt writer before earning more substantial roles. By 1927, he had appeared in his first lead roles in two westerns, Arizona Bound and Nevada. He was one of few stars who successfully transitioned into the talkies and reached pinnacle star status after releasing his first talking picture, The Virginian. By the 1940s, Cooper expanded into other genres, starring in classic movies such as The Pride of the Yankees and Mr. Deeds Goes to Washington while continuing to appear in westerns. Out of all of Cooper's western films, He's widely remembered for his iconic performance in the Western film High Noon, which earned him his second Academy Award win for Best Actor. Glenn Ford could draw and fire a gun in 0.4 seconds and was credited as the fastest gun in Hollywood, beating out even the Duke and Gunsmoke star James Arness. At six years old, Ford and his family moved from Canada to California, where he first started acting in high school productions and working in small theater groups after graduation. He eventually signed a contract with Poverty Row Studio, Columbia Pictures, and appeared in his first Western Texas, co-starring William Holden and Claire Trevor. Ford starred alongside Randolph Scott in John Ford's Western, The Desperados, and soon earned lead roles in other famous westerns, including The Americano, The Fastest Gun Alive, and the iconic film Three, Ten to Yuma, co-starring Van Heflin. In 1978, 
Ford was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma for his significant influence and contribution to the Western genre. Ford often portrayed ordinary men in unusual circumstances. Although he starred in many genres of film, some of his most significant roles were in the film noir Gilda and the Big Heat and the high school drama Blackboard Jungle. However, it was for comedies or westerns that he received acting laurels, including three Golden Globe nominations for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical, or Comedy, winning for Pocketful of Miracles. He also played a supporting role as Superman's mild-mannered alter ego, Clark Kent's adoptive farmer father, Jonathan Kent, in the first film of the franchise series, Superman. Five of his films have been selected for the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Gilda, The Big Heat, Blackboard Jungle, Three, Ten to Yuma, and Superman. Handsome, American leading man who developed into one of Hollywood's greatest and most popular Western stars. Randolph Scott starred in dozens of comedies, dramas, and horror films, but he's widely credited for his on-screen image as the tall-in-the-saddle Western hero. In the mid-1920s, Scott made his way from Virginia to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career. He eventually found work as an extra and minor player in various films, including John Ford's The Black Watch and The Virginian. He earned his first major role starring in Paramount's 1932 film Heritage of the Desert, which established him as a Western star. Scott went on to star in other Westerns such as The Desperados, Western Union, and The Nevadan, and made his final film appearance in the 1962 Western ride The High Country. A multi-millionaire as a result of canny investments, Scott spent his remaining years playing golf and avoiding film industry affairs, stating that he didn't like publicity. In 1975, Scott was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum and also received a Golden Boot Award for his extensive work in the Western genre. He died in 1987, survived by his second wife, Patricia Stillman, and his two adopted children, Christopher and Sandra. He is buried in Charlotte, North Carolina. Few actors have names as synonymous with a character archetype as Clint Eastwood. Eastwood's entire identity is so closely tied to his iconic Western characters that he's a permanent fixation within the genre. It's even the name that Marty McFly takes as his own when he travels back in time to the Old West in Back to the Future, Part 3. Eastwood began within the Western genre through his collaborations with the incredible Italian filmmaker Sergio Leone in the 1960s. Leone cast the young American star in his Dollars Trilogy, in which the nameless Man with No Name helped those in need in a series of unconnected adventures. 1964's A Fistful of Dollars, 1965's For a Few Dollars More, and 1966's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly all became classics. Eastwood returned to star in American films from other filmmakers like Hang 'em High, but he quickly began directing his features. After launching his directorial career with the 1971 neon noir Play Misty For Me, Eastwood personally helmed Western classics like The Outlaw Josie Wales, Pale Rider, and Bronco Billy. Eastwood's 1991 classic, Unforgiven, reflected on the themes of the Western genre with its commentary on cyclical violence and the irredeemable men who commit evil. Eastwood starred as a mature version of a former gunslinger 
and the film instantly solidified itself as one of the greatest westerns ever made. He returned to westerns this year with Cry Macho. When it comes to westerns, there isn't a movie fan out there who doesn't immediately think of John Wayne. Born in Iowa, Wayne grew up in Southern California and never intended to become an actor. But after an injury cost him his football scholarship at USC, he was hired as a prop boy by John Ford. Wayne soon started taking on minor and extra roles before his breakthrough performance in Ford's classic Western stagecoach. He appeared in nearly 250 movies, many of epic proportions. From 1942 to 1943, he was in a radio series, The Three Sheets to the Wind, and in 1944, he helped found the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals, a conservative political organization, later becoming its president. His conservative political stance was also reflected in the Alamo, which he produced, directed, and starred in. His patriotic stand was enshrined in the Green Berets, which he co-directed and starred in. Over the years, Wayne was beset with health problems. In September 1964, he had a cancerous left lung removed. In 1977, when Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope was being made, John Wayne's archive voice was used for the character Gorindon Ez Zavor. Later in March 1978, there was heart valve replacement surgery. And in January 1979, his stomach was removed. He received the Best Actor nomination for Sands of Iwo Jima. He won his one and only Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance as Rooster Cogburn in the 1969 Western True Grit, which he reprised for a sequel, Rooster Cogburn. A congressional gold medal was struck in his honor in 1979. Wayne's frequent Western roles established him as an American icon, as well as one of Hollywood's most exceptional leading men. His collaborations with Ford, including The Searchers, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, are considered to be some of Wayne's greatest Westerns. And with that, we wrap up today's episode. Thank you for joining us once again. We hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you will be the first to see our new updates. See you in our next video.